Will Holland, AK Quantic, and I'm here in my Brooklyn home, and I'm here to talk about my records and uh, what I'm doing musically. The art of recording, I think, is such a beautiful form because it's transporting, it can uh, allow you a window into a world which maybe is, is not even there anymore. What happened in Colombia is that the jukeboxes were um, 78 bass jukeboxes instead of 45, so it, this was like the principal medium for, for listening to music in, in clubs and social kind of environments. So they pressed like up until the late 70s a lot of records, and th this is a heavy thing. This is um, Rufu Garrido, who's a costeño um, musician. He recorded for uh, Cordo Fuentes a lot, but uh, this is called Inspiración Sabanera. Um, I don't have a 78 recorder, so I'll do it with my finger. You consider that, like, at uh, that time, like, uh, like, vinyl real estate was quite kind of hard to come by, and they, uh, the fact they devoted, like, a whole side just to the band just getting, just doing their thing, just, like, yeah, just very expressive, like, clarinet, and, like, yeah, it's, like, hard to find records that like that. But. So this is a record um, that principally got me into the Colombian sound and got me hip to um, musicians like Fruco and Michi Samiento. Um, actually, Fruco uh, played on my new record. Um, he's a tremendous timbali player and bass player, and this is one of the early records. The thing they were doing with these records is they were kind of mixing them, especially on the stereo editions, they were mixing them in a very progressive manner. So for salsa and in Colombia, it was a very new way of kind of separating the instruments and making like a soundscape, which um, I think was quite new at the time. I was speaking to Achi recently to the trumpet player um, in, on the Tropica, he played on this record and I was like, what's the deal, man? Like, they're, they're, they're kind of heavy for the time, kind of heavy sim symbolism on these records. Like, this is another another one by Fruko at the time, you know, and it's, if you think about it, it's like early 70s, these guys are pictured in the graveyard, like, in memory of the dead, and he's there shooting up heroin in the graveyard, with, you know, with his homies and kind of like laying respect with the radio on top of the tombstone and stuff like that so like they were doing really controversial stuff and he was saying like this was really like they were pushing this imagery to kind of because no one was doing it at the time they just wanted to be super controversial and like that I think in salsa was is like a really cool move this is a record that um, I actually don't really know much about it I assume it's from Hong Kong or from China and uh, it's one I listen to a lot um, and it's like kind of difficult because it's worn away, the co the labels worn away, and it's in in um, Cantonese or something like that. Anyway, so I don't know what the who the artist is, but I bought it in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City, um, and I was speaking to a fellow in an antique shop, and he had a bunch of records underneath one of the tables, and um, he was like, "Oh, I got more in the house." So I went on the back of his scooter. He took me to his to his house. Really, really nice fella. So this is it's like basically like a. For me, I love it because it's a traditional Chinese instrumentation, I guess, but uh, with cha-cha-cha. So, yeah, it's pretty unique kind of sound. But I guess it principally, like, I was into jazz and soul and the kind of, I had an appreciation for this sensibility of, of being able to have soul in a record and be playing. And then kind of once you get into that, where you're like, wow, actually, you know, that, that kind of mentality can apply to you know, Latin American music it can apply to African music, Caribbean music, all over, basically. And I think I got into different this kind of concept of um, trying to find music that I could combine with my own music. And I think um, the, the thread is difficult sometimes because it's not logical. Sometimes people will be like, hey, but, you know, why is there like an Ethiopian rap, uh, you know, hip hop vocal on your on your record? It's like, well, you know, it makes sense to me just because, you know, I love Ethiopian music and I went to Addis Ababa, you know, a few years ago and just really got into the music and I think that speaks volumes. You just gotta love, do what you love and everything that's on there and connected is because I kind of love it. All these are German, um, German made. 
But uh, yeah, this one is uh, I got I picked up in England. <laughs>